Hi, in this video we're going to review Folsom Cordova's guiding plan for improving student achievement in our areas of highest need. The Local Control Accountability Plan, also known as the LCAP, is a state mandated document that must be updated each year to ensure that the district not only is targeting its services and expenditures toward our highest need students, but also to measure whether those actions are meeting the desired outcomes. Today's presentation will provide background on the purpose of the LCAP, offer summaries of the goals, actions, services, and desired outcomes of our current year LCAP, and then conclude with a survey you can take to provide your input. Your feedback will be used as we update and make revisions to next year's LCAP. So before we dive into the details, it's important to review Folsom Cordova's mission statement as a guiding vision for everything that we do in our district. It states that Folsom Cordova is committed to providing excellence in educational programs that carry high expectations for each student's achievement and success. The next slide will go deeper into understanding who all of our students are. When we speak of all students, who are they? Who do we serve? This slide gives you a high-level overview. We are a growing district of more than 2,000 students and nearly 2,400 employees, more than half of them teachers and other educators. We have 33 schools throughout Rancho Cordova and Folsom. In the middle column of this slide, you'll see breakdowns of some of our highest need students, including our district-wide average of low-income students is 38.3%. When you break that down, a majority of those students live in Rancho Cordova, while fewer are enrolled in our Folsom schools. Nearly 13% are English learners. More than 40 of our students are in the foster system, and more than 750 of our students are classified as homeless. More than 2,700 of our students are identified as needing special education services. And then on the far left of the slide is the ethnic and racial demographic breakdown of our district, which is increasingly diverse. So why does the state require a local control and accountability plan, or an LCAP? It has to do with how the state changed school funding several years ago. So back in 2013, California fundamentally changed the formula for how school funding is determined. Today, districts receive school funding based on the demographics of their student population, the proportion of English learners, um, students living in poverty, students in foster care, and have more flexibility for how to use those funds. Again, this is called the Local Control Funding Formula, or sometimes you hear it referred to as LCFF. In exchange, the state requires an accountability plan, that's the LCAP, to outline how those funds are to be spent and how they are improving outcomes for students. There are eight areas that the state requires school districts to prioritize. Student engagement, student achievement, other student outcomes, school climate, parental engagement, basic services, implementation of Common Core state standards, and course access. Why does the state allocate a greater share of funds to schools with higher percentages of English learners, students living in poverty, and foster youth? So this image is a popular way to illustrate the philosophy behind the local control funding formula. It's the idea that providing equal resources to all students doesn't necessarily produce equitable outcomes for all students. That's because some students may need more support than others because they arrive at school with more barriers in their way to learning. There are two key words in this process that are worth emphasizing, local control. The idea is that our local school communities know better than the state where our unique needs and challenges exist. That's why it's vital that the district involve all of our stakeholders in the decision making and plan development process our teachers, support staff, parents, students, administrators, and community members. The district needs your input to best identify the areas of need and the potential solutions to address them. Before we dive into a review of this year's LCAP goals, here's our timeline for getting input and making revisions. So in February, the district launched our recent effort, a series of events called Education Town Halls, in which more than 300 people representing different groups throughout the district, our teachers, our employees, our parents, our students, administrators, and community members, reviewed school and district performance data and brainstormed ideas for improvement together. Today's presentation is our second phase of this school year's stakeholder engagement process and will include a survey at the end. The district will use all of this feedback it's gathered to determine potential revisions to our LCAP, 
then distribute the draft plan back to the community for input before its final adoption. This slide provides a summary of our plan. As a district that starts with a high status of English language arts, the district is most proud of our sustained growth in this area. The district believes this growth is directly related to our efforts to support our lowest performing schools through the institution of academic and social emotional supports, along with a renewed commitment to professional development. The district also made progress in the achievement of our English learners at our lowest performing schools. Among our areas of greatest challenge is a need to improve our suspension rates. The district will continue character education, bullying prevention programs, and provide continued training to staff on mental health and emotional wellness support for our students. In our plan, we have identified several performance gaps that will need continued action to address. Suspension rate data shows that students with disabilities and African American students are suspended at higher rates than the district's average. And students with disabilities and African American students also are absent at higher rates, performing lower on state assessments for mathematics and English language arts than the district average. Our LCAP is guided by four primary goals. Goal 1 states that all students will receive instruction from a highly qualified teacher and have access to curriculum that promotes college and career readiness. This is goal 1, and our LCAP commits to meeting this goal in three ways. Maintaining the appropriate assignment of fully credentialed teachers and providing new teacher support. Maintaining all schools in good repair, and all students must have access to curriculum that is aligned to state standards. So the bottom of this slide goes into a little bit more detail about efforts we have funded to meet those goals. So I'm going to pause here so you can take a minute to read that. This is goal two, and goal two states the district will increase parent and student engagement and provide a safe, healthy, and positive learning environment. Our LCAP commits to meeting this goal in the following ways. Increasing student attendance rates and reducing chronic absences, increasing the high school graduation rate and decreasing the dropout rate for all students, including historically underperforming subgroups, decreasing eighth grade dropout rates, reducing student suspension, expulsion rates, reducing bullying incidents and increasing school connectedness, increasing family engagement and parent input, including the utilization of volunteers, increasing community partnerships that support student learning, and increasing the efficiency, timeliness, and accessibility of district communications. So again, I'm going to pause here because this part of the slide goes into quite a bit more detail about efforts that we have funded to meet those goals. Moving on to goal three. Goal three states that the district will provide students with high quality classroom instruction and access to a broad course of study. Our LCAP commits to meeting this goal in the following ways. Providing professional development in new adoptions and local curriculum. Ensuring all teachers and students have access to research-based English learner strategies to improve achievement. And providing access to Courses that prepare students for college and career, like Career Technical Education, or CTE, International Baccalaureate, Advanced Placement, or STEM classes. At the bottom of this slide, you'll see a little bit more detail about efforts we have funded to meet those goals. So I'll pause here to give you a moment to read that. Our final goal is goal number four, and it states that the district will monitor student progress and educational outcomes for success using assessment results. Our LCAP commits to meeting this goal in the following ways. 
ensure students are reading at grade level with special emphasis on grades 1, 3, 5, 8, and 11. Ensure students are meeting grade level standards in math with special emphasis in grades 1, 3, 5, 8, and 11. Ensure English learners are making yearly progress. Ensure students receiving special education services are making yearly progress. Improve kindergarten readiness as measured by curriculum embedded assessments. And increase the percentage of ninth grade students completing 60 units by using interventions and credit recovery. On this part of the slide, you're going to see more detail about efforts that we have funded to meet those goals. And I'll pause here so you can take a moment to read that. So now that we've taken the time to review highlights of this year's LCAP, it's time to get your input as we propose drafts to next year's plan. Use this link to take our survey now, or you can take it at a later date. The deadline to take our survey is Tuesday, April 23rd. Thank you for investing your time and input so that we can all work together to best support our students' success.